Hello everyone, today we have a new video review and as you can see this time we are going to talk about fresh release from Minyard. This is a 135 scale kit and we get a German artillery tractor T60 so this time it is accompanied with a crew and also the pack 40 gun so all of them obviously are in the same scale so it might be a good opportunity to build a diorama project and of course we have a commercial sample here so it means you will get exactly the same stuff as what you will see in this video review this is the final shape of this kit and the kit number 35395 so it should be already already in all good model shops. I think Modeli Max has it for sure, so you can order it there. And the box size, I would say it's surprisingly small considering how many items are inside. By the way, here you can see comparison with my hand, but the weight of the box is noticeable for this size. And here on the side, you can see also some information for the safety and about manufacturer. While on the opposite side, we can see two marking options, but I think it's not like limiting you. You can also find something if you uh, search for some reference materials. And by the way, here you can note that the decals are coming from cartograph so this is a top opening box and as you can see it's a quite tightly filled with parts all of the frames are sealed into one plastic bag so I'm going to take them out right now and we will take a closer look together in the meantime I can also mention that this is not an interior kit even though this T60 model was available as interior kit as well but I think in this version it's not necessary so that's why Minyard decided to focus only on external stuff and maybe some Madors will be happy to hear this so just give me a moment so maybe you'll be happy to hear this because it means also the smaller parts count by the way I just opened the plastic bag and inside plastic bag we had two plastic bags with the screws so I will have to cut them through, but what was separate is this small envelope with Minyard logo, so I'm going to open it right now. And we will take a closer look at the P thread, which is hidden there. So let's zoom in a bit, maybe open the lenses. And now you can see that we have unpainted P parts for fine features on the vehicle. So even though we do not get interior here, still there is plenty of metal parts to be installed on the outer panels. And that might be tricky in some cases because some of those parts, as you can see here, they're really tiny. They will require some tweezers and maybe also P tool because otherwise it will be nearly impossible to get them into the right shape but it's good to get the engine bay meshes as a PE parts so this is always a bit more realistic upgrade in comparison with what you can get with the pre-molded features so definitely a good thing to have and of course all of this uh, separate clamps and other stuff is also handy in the building a bit more convincing vehicle. So what I'm doing right now is opening the first plastic bag which was inside. Okay, so what do we have here? First of all, we have parts for the Pack 40 gun. So this is the first sprue, maybe I'll zoom out a bit so that you can see more. So overall, I would say the quality looks typical for this brand. So there is nothing to be worried about. Note that the main gun barrel is molded as a single piece part. Here we have also one piece muzzle brakes. And if I flip it over here, you can check these parts from the opposite side. So next we continue with parts for road wheels. Here we have quite interesting design. I'm just checking them at the moment. It's a sprue CA and as you can see we get them as a plastic parts. So those are actually side walls of the rubber tires. I guess the central section will be supplied on the uh, different sprues. So we will see them further in this video. Next we continue with the sprue A. So here we get the armor shields and we also get the uh, special bars which will be installed in the towing position I guess if you will attach this gun to the uh, tank. So in this uh, case it should be in towing position because otherwise it will look strange but overall it's nice to have that many parts on just a simple gun because some manufacturers prefer to skip on different features not in this case 
and I'm happy to see this. What I'm now a bit confused about is that we get the engine here. So here you can check it. And I wonder why it is included here, especially considering that we are not getting the interior kit. At least it was not mentioned on the box, but we get a nicely detailed engine. And if I flip it over here, you can check the parts from the opposite side. Okay. Next, we have the Spruce C G with minor elements, nothing special, and I think we'll see them uh, how they are used in the assembly manual. Next one is a CF, so here we get various Pioneer tools, and as you can see, they are molded without clamps, so clamps will be replicated with PE parts, as far as I can guess, and obviously it will affect the overall detailing of the vehicle. By the way, this sprue is supplied in two pieces. And also, as far as you can see, one of the shovels actually had the clamp. So it will be up to you whether you would like to prefer the part with the clamp or without it. Next, we have another sprue which is supplied in two pieces. It's a sprue CB. So here we get another portion of internal elements. And this gets me interested whether we get a full interior details here. Even though it was not announced on the box. And next is a sprue A, again with some interior parts. I will zoom out a bit. So here you can see the driver's seat. We also get some of the ammo racks and also some of the control elements which will be installed inside the tank. My guess is that these parts are supplied in case you would like to open this hatches or maybe the engine bay doors. But who knows, maybe we get the full interior here. So in the meantime, you can hear I'm trying to open another plastic bag. So just give me a few seconds to do so. And I will take them out. Okay, so it's a bit tricky thing to do because we get them as a small things. Okay, so I will show you one for the tank. So for the T60, uh, if you saw the previous releases, previous versions, you might be familiar with this uh, top armor panel, which is molded as a single piece part. And I have to say that it's good and bad at the same time because it can be easily damaged during the shipping procedure or uh, also when you store it in the wrong way. So that's why it might be worth checking the part before the actual purchase. And also, if I flip it over here inside, you can see that it's kind of plain inside because all of the features will be added later. Okay, next we continue with another large sprue. So here we have a sprue BA. This one is dedicated to the hull parts. So here we have the lower or floor panel and also the side fenders. And if I flip it over here on the floor panel, we actually get some features. And note that fenders are also detailed inside. This is not just a plain part with emptiness inside. And that's good that Miniard actually thinks about details from all of the, let's say, possible um, dimensions, because in 135 scale it might be noticeable that manufacturer decided to skip on some features. Next we continue with the sprue CI, so we get five sprues, at least I see five sprues here, and I will show you only one, because they, as you saw, they carry the same set of parts. And it might be a good opportunity actually to zoom in. So here you can see the road wheels. Know that they're molded together with the rubber bandages. And that's why you have to be careful while painting. And as usual, Miniard does not include any masking templates or any other helpful thing which will guide you through the painting process. So that's why you have to do your own masks or templates. And for this, usually the circular rulers come handy. Next, we continue with the tensioners. So these are supplied on three spruce as far as you can see. And here we get them as a single piece parts. So it's just a matter of getting them into the right spot and you'll be good to go. Maybe do not forget to replicate some weathering because they usually get a bit teared up. Next is the sprue EC. So here we get the um, another armor 
addition for the top house section. As you can see, the hatch is molded separately, so you can open it. And here you can check the part from the opposite side. So this hatch is not empty inside or plain inside. It actually features some of the details, which is really great for this scale. Next, we continue with track parts. And those are supplied on several spruce. As far as you can see, so 11 spruce, I will show them in a second, here they are. And I will leave only one so that you can see what we will be talking about. So here we have the separate track links, they're really tiny here, you can see comparison with my fingertip and that's why you have to be careful while assembling, obviously there is no assembly jig inside, so in case you would like to get a nice result, then definitely make one yourself, because otherwise it will be really tricky to get all of these track links together and get them into the proper shape. And of course pay attention how many track links should be combined for each side, because it's quite important here. Next, we continue with another portion of the armor panels here. And I will try to get another sprue in the meantime, just give me a moment. I am a bit surprised that we get actually four sprues of the same type. And I will show you in a second, here they are. So here we get the sprue CA. This one carries mix of parts, so we get the stowage boxes. We also get the drive sprocket parts. And drive sprocket, as far as you can see, it features the guiding element, which you can see at the moment. And if I flip it over here, you can check it from the opposite side. So overall, it looks nice, but the attachment point is in between teeth, and it might be a bit tricky to separate it. I think we all had experience with such designs, so just do not hurry, maybe use the sharp knife and it will be easier to get this part of the frame. We also get the separate sprue for the MG gun. So here you can see it might be handy for the German version obviously. And I would say we encountered it in the previous mini art releases. Next we continue with another parts portion for the ammo boxes. And we also get some ammo as well. So everything looks fine. Next, another sprue with armor panels. Note that we also get some installation points for external elements. This is also handy. And here we get some internal features as well. But I, again, I'm not sure what, uh, at to what extent we will get interior here. But these parts are quite nice. So here we have the um, idlers. And as you can see, they look really interesting because they're molded, first of all, they're molded as a single piece parts. And the second thing is that they're molded as a, um, I would say, new element for this captured version. So that will be different from the classic T70. And next, we continue with the side armor panels in case you wondered <laughs> where they are. So here, and these parts are not that big, just to give you an impression of the T60 size, as you can see, it's smaller than my palm. But then if we flip it them over, we have details from both sides. And that might be handy also in case you plan to open some of the hatches, obviously. And last but not the least is the sprue with figurines. So here we actually get the interconnection between two sprues. And I would say this figure is kind of typical for mini art in a good sense, because we get really nice molding quality out of the box. And the parts design is also standard for this scale. So we get separate legs, hands, one piece torso, and also head here. And if we flip it over here inside helmets, I can see, well, these features are not that prominent, so it's easier to say that uh, the helmets are empty inside, so you won't be able to position them, let's say, beside the figure or on the tank. But again, the molding quality looks fine. There are obviously no guiding elements whatsoever and poses are predefined, so that's why pay attention to the fitment of these parts together so that it will look natural once it's assembled into one soldier. Next we continue with assembly manual. So what I'm doing now is closing the lenses and zooming out. So this assembly manual is printed in cover. It's a large brochure. We have also a short list of the features on the cover. 
Here we have first marking option for the Eastern Front 1943. Then we continue with the parts map. And as usual, Miniard does not show unused parts, so pay attention to that because there are definitely will be some parts which will require uh, choosing between two versions. Assembly process starts with the four panel. And as you can see, we actually get to install some of the interior parts. And this is really interesting. So we get the engine, we get also the driver's seat. And as I said, I wonder why it is included. Maybe because it will be visible on the finished model. Because we do not get fully detailed interior. But still we get uh, kind of main components, let's say. Also here you can see the driver hatch being assembled and detailed with separate handles and other stuff. I can see P parts being employed there. And we also assemble the drivetrain or suspension. Next we continue with the storage box. Actually this is not a storage box but this is the uh, engine bay mesh. And as far as I can see you can also employ these PE meshes for it. And they're not that huge so it will be a bit tricky. Here you can see these parts actually. I'm pointing with my thumb. And next we continue with the rear mesh. So here you can see you will have to bend it a bit. So do not hurry with this thing because it's uh, always tricky to bend uh, PE meshes into the necessary shape. Next we continue with the um, shovel being installed on the vehicle. And then we also use the machine gun. So yeah, that's why we get the engine included because we do not get the turret. I completely forgot that there is no turret on this vehicle. And as you can see, machine gun is installed onto one of the markings. Next, we proceed to assemble the pack 40. So here uh, we also get the chance to use metal wire for the brake lines on this Pack 40. We also can assemble it in the combat or transport position, as I said before. So definitely decide what you would like to have on your build. Maybe it will depend on the diorama uh, plan. And again, I am quite impressed with the amount of parts involved into assembly of this main gun. So definitely spend some time trying to weather it as well so that it will look convincing. And here we actually connect the gun to the tank. Next, we continue with another marking guide this one is for figures which will be placed on the tank here we also get a um, small ad for the kids in the separate boxing let's say so we reviewed them as well you can find it easily on our youtube channel and here we have the second marking option which employs also the machine gun so it will be up to you to decide whether you would like to have the machine gun or you would like to have the clean version, let's say. So overall it looks like an interesting combo, but this is definitely a kit for experienced modellers. Of course, I will be happy to hear your opinion about this release. Do not forget to write it here in the comment section below. And if you like this video, press the like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And I will see you in the next video review as usual. Thank you for joining me today and bye.